Freshly cooked prawns are one of Australia's favourite seafoods. Just about everybody loves to eat prawns. But few realise how they are caught and the problems that are caused by these methods. Most prawns are caught by prawn trawls, which involves towing a fairly fine mesh net near the bottom of the ocean and catching the prawns that are in its path. However, in doing this, most other fish and crustaceans that are in the path of the net are also caught and are thrown back dead or in poor condition. This extra unwanted catch is often called bycatch. In New South Wales, prawn trawling catches some $25 million worth of prawns per year. In catching this, large numbers of a wide variety of small fish are also caught and discarded some of these fish are juveniles of commercially and recreationally important species like whiting, brim, flathead, mulloway and snapper. Like most prawn trawl fisheries throughout the world, catching large numbers of these small fish is considered a major problem in New South Wales because it may reduce the stocks of these important species. To try and reduce this bycatch, scientists from the Fisheries Research Institute in Cronulla have developed and tested several devices designed to exclude the unwanted fish from prawn trawls. In New South Wales we have several different types of prawn trawl fisheries. Some are based in estuaries and some are based in oceanic waters. All have very different characteristics, such as the gear they use, the grounds they fish on, the prawns they catch, and most importantly, the types of bycatch that they discard. For these reasons, we at New South Wales Fisheries Research Institute tested several different types of bycatch reducing devices and over the past several years we have come up with two designs that work quite well in our various fisheries. Prawn trawling in estuaries occurs in New South Wales in Botany Bay, Sydney Harbour and the Hawkesbury, Hunter and Clarence Rivers and involves approximately 330 vessels. Although the vessels and gear used are quite small, prawn trawlers in these estuaries also catch quite large numbers of juvenile fish in their bycatch. Sometimes species like jellyfish are captured. For the past 30 years, some prawn trawlers have used a mesh separator panel termed the blubber chute to remove these jellyfish. Because many of the fish and other animals that need to be excluded from prawn trawls are larger than the targeted prawns, research by New South Wales fisheries scientists has concentrated on changing prawn trawls so that the catch is sorted mechanically. In particular, this device, the Nordmore grid, has been developed for use in these fisheries. The Nordmore grid consists of a small aluminium grid sewn into the net at an angle of 45 degrees. A guiding panel is located in front of the grid to direct the catch towards its base, where the catch is then sorted according to size as it slides up the grid. The small animals, including prawns, pass through the grid. The larger animals go up and out the escape hole. To look at how this device works underwater, an underwater video camera was positioned here, facing forwards. Compared to conventional nets, the Nordmore grid has been shown to remove up to 90% of unwanted bycatch with no reduction in the catches of prawns. There are about 300 oceanic prawn trawlers in New South Wales that usually fish at night from between Newcastle and Tweed Heads. These vessels mainly try to catch king prawns, although a significant part of the total income comes from retained bycatch or byproduct like Balmain bugs, octopus, squid and bigger fish. 
In addition to the targeted prawns and byproduct, these trawlers, like the ones in the estuaries, also catch large numbers of juvenile fish that are discarded. Because oceanic prawn trawlers retain both prawns and other larger byproduct, Research into ways of reducing unwanted bycatch in this fishery has examined designs that allow only small fish to escape. This rather simple looking design, termed the composite square mesh panel, consists of small panels of square shaped mesh sewn into a certain strategic position in the top of the cod end. The composite square mesh panel has been designed so that the load is distributed anterior and lateral to this main escape panel. These panels are positioned in an area in the cod end where there's maximum displacement of water forwards from the catch. Fish entering the cod end tend to rise up and are assisted by this displaced water to pass through these open square meshes and escape. Prawns tend to stay low in the cod end and end up back in the bag. To illustrate how this works, we placed a camera on this anterior section facing aft. Most fish tend to go upwards in this section of the net although the small size of the square mesh only allows juvenile fish to escape. Many of the fish escaping here are juvenile whiting and other juvenile fish species. After several years of development, this composite square mesh panel has now been tested over the full range of conditions in the oceanic fishery. Compared to conventional trawls, it has been found to be very effective in reducing the bycatch of small, non-target fish, such as whiting and flathead, while actually increasing the catches of prawns. By removing up to 40% of the unwanted bycatch from the cod end, you effectively allow the mouth of the trawl to spread more. This means that you cover more of the seabed and effectively catch more prawns. While these bycatch reducing devices have been shown to be very effective in allowing unwanted fish to escape the trawl underwater, it is important to know if the escaping fish survive the process of passing through the escape devices. Unless most of these fish survive after escape underwater, these devices will contribute little to conserving stocks. To examine this issue, recent experiments have been done under simulated conditions in the laboratory to examine the damage and survival rates of fish that escape from the Nordmore grid and composite square mesh panel. Data are collected on the physical damage and number of fish surviving after passing through meshes. The results have shown that fish such as whiting, brim and mulloway sustain little damage during escape through the bycatch reducing devices and have a survival rate greater than 95%. The effectiveness of bycatch reducing devices like the normal grid and the composite square mesh panel have led to their voluntary acceptance by many of the prawn trawlers in New South Wales. This fact, plus our work that showed that most fish survive after passing through these devices, lead us to conclude that their proper use throughout New South Wales will solve many of our problems associated with the bycatch and discarding of unwanted fish by prawn trawlers. The success of this project has shown what can be achieved when government scientists and fishermen work together to solve a problem. New South Wales Fisheries is continuing to work with industry in bycatch reduction devices and so help maintain responsible fishing along our coasts.